Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mowers. I haven't long got out of bed actually. Um, I worked last night and it's early, early doors now. It's only 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, I had to get up early because a gentleman wanted me to have a look at his, his lawnmower this morning. Um, what's it doing? Uh, it fires up but won't stay running. So um, I suspect it to be a, uh, a fuel issue of some description. Uh, it's not a particularly um, good make of lawnmower. In fact, I need to say it's a typical trap that most people fall into when buying a lawnmower. <coughs> I buy these lawnmowers from certain outlets um, and they're extremely cheap and they don't, don't even last a season pretty much. So uh, unfortunately it's, it's one of those. But um, either way, I don't mind. It comes into, into my shop and it gives me an opportunity to work on something and uh, gives me a chance to talk to you lot, so that's fantastic. So, the war is coming. I said there's trouble coming ahead. That's still coming, this little video has just jumped inside it. Um, I'm just waiting for Riley Boyd to, to get home to be in the next, in the next video for, a, for our battle, which will be fantastic. So, without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's check out this little tiny failing to run lawnmower. Okay, and here it is. It's one. If this is sold by one of the major shopping outlets in the UK, and it's a little overhead valve job in a little 98.5 cc engine, a little Chinese knockoff copy. And the problem we've got is is that you prime it two or three times at the start, but then it'll just cut out. that's what it's doing so it's got a carburetor issue I dare say so let's get it up on the bench and let's get it looked at um, and we'll go from there I suppose right so here it is what year are we talking I oh, was 2012 model he's had it a couple of years he did say and he did also say that he's never ever took the fuel out of it so it's always had the same fuel in <clears throat> so that's not helping matters i couldn't even inspect the fuel because the uh, the fuel cap wouldn't come undone there it goes there's good fuel on top i can smell i can smell good fuel but i'm suspicious that it's actually got bad fuel underneath it so let's pop this little air filter off that's in good nick actually so this is just gonna be a quick running carburetor service i dare say <clears throat> i want to get my forceps out i want to drain the fuel off and take the uh take the old air box off Whoop, come on air compressor So lots of people fall into this trap of buying these, these little raw mowers and uh, they just they're just not up to the, up to a task it's as simple as that so this is going to be a bit of an issue trying to get this whole carburetor assembly off <coughs> with uh it's got the primer bulb off it as well so it's going to be a bit of a bit of a challenge No, the whole carburetor should come off. I don't have to take the height adjustment off with it, surely. Well, I'm not. It's as simple as that. See, that primer bowl should unscrew as well. But I've had them before where they just snap. And if it snaps and I'm, then we're out of luck then. I'll try and get a bit of a turn. But I don't want to force it. If I can help it. No. If I, if I do that, it's because it's going to snap. So I might have to remove the height adjustment to take this off. All right, there it goes. There it goes. It didn't fit over at first. <coughs> Let's uh, whip this recall assembly off as well whilst we're here. My lord, can't get in there. I need a fin bar. 
Right, I've got the thin bar. I'm just taking this off just for ease of access for you guys so you can see what's going on. No other reason. Right, all that, that, that bolt, all that nut. <coughs> I'm still tired, I tell you. I'm gonna go back to bed later on and get my head down again for, for tonight's job. Right, I should lift that. So I've got another bolt here somewhere, holding that on. No, come on. Come on. What's occurring? What's occurring? That's off. Well, it just needs to be wrenched off. That's a, that's a trick. Right, I'm going to get these two, two nuts. Put that back on. I want a bit of a blow off an air compressor as well before I even start. I'm just going to soak top of this carburetor here. Um, just so I can get a bit of clean access and then drop the pipe off, drop the fuel hose off. Right, so all I'm going to do is just got some old stale fuel here. Literally just going to push it on top of a carburetor here. Just to get rid of any excess dirt that we don't want. <clears throat> This is, helps to stop getting any more dirt inside the uh, inside the system where it's not needed. <coughs> okay, so now I want to get my forceps in. I'm gonna get rid of that old fuel. So I want to see what see what type of fuel we've got coming in into out of this tank. Just push it over, touch. About there. So yeah, these, <coughs> I mean, these little engines are okay. You know, for people who've got little tiny gardens, but they're just, just not up to a job. And it comes with self propel as well. Can you believe it? I dare say this probably goes for about 120 pound. Little tiny engine with self propel on it. I'm just fighting with this clip at the moment. Don't want to play ball. There it goes. So I've now got fuel coming out the back of a car, bro. I can see that. So I want to try and keep it all as much as I can. So give it a little twist, just to encourage that off. And I'll clamp that uh, fuel hose. That drops off. Tipping back. So we'll inspect that in a minute. Let me drop that carburetor out. So there's one spring off the back come off and the carburetor then should rotate off like so that's good let's leave a carburetor up right best we can <coughs> let's look at this fuel see what that looks like let's go a bit lower if we can I'd like to put that down under there be good get it drain straight out let's see what we get in there so that's all going to come out it looks yellowish in colour already. I'm going to wipe down as we go. Okay, as you see, the fuel has uh, got a bit of debris inside it. Not a great deal, but it's very, very yellow in colour. So that's all spent fuel. That's no good for nothing. So we move over to the uh, to the bench, and then we get this carburetor looked, to get it broken down, get it looked into, to see what that's doing. Okay, so I've got you up on a little on a little GoPro um, stand today again. I'm hoping this is going to improve the, the quality of your of your viewing because you're much closer in and you're over the other side from me. So all I'm going to do is just going to start to remove this lower this lower bowl. I'll put it over into a tray because I want to catch any remnants of what there is in here. I don't think there's going to be a lot in here to be honest. To be fair. Are you seeing stuff already coming out? I am. 
Let me get something to tap that with. Where's my boshing tool? Here it is. So that's just broken the seal. Careful, careful, just wanna keep the bowl. And there's what's inside the inside the bowl of a carburetor. And what I like to do, I like to take photographs of this just so I can send it to the customer to show him that what's inside it. So say if I want to say cheese, one, two, three, cheese. Fantastic. You look great. <clears throat> so that's a bit smeggy. I'm leave, I'm trying to leave that little gasket a little ring on where I can. So that's shot. I want to take the main pin out as well. Of the float. That's why it wasn't running. There's no way you could have left it in there, so that comes out. I don't know if you'll see it, I'll be a bit careful, make sure you're seeing this. There goes a the needle, it's just falling off. Now these jets in here, we've got one jet to come out, from what I can see, but um, that's tiny. And then, it's gonna be too small. Um, the main jet, which is the one I'd like to get out, doesn't actually come out by the looks of it. So this little chappy here, he comes out. Let's get rid of that tray for now because there's no fuel in there. And that's why it, it, it was running, it wasn't starting or running because there's no fuel getting in that carburetor. So that goes in tight. It's not the right screwdriver after really. I want the next one down. I'm not seeing, that could be it there. Yeah. It's slightly thinner, that's it. So that comes out. There's a little tiny hole in there as well. And that's about the, all there is to this carburetor. There's nothing else can come out. Oh, there's one here. There's one round here that can come out and all. So this one, I'd better get away just winding it all the way in, which is your idle. So just count this, count the revolutions. One turn. Two turns, I'll be able to get, get through that. So I need to back this one out two turns when it goes back in. That one does. Let's cut the holes in there, any sorting. And that's it. So that carburetor is now is now ready for uh, for cleaning. I'm going to bring in that stale fuel again, which I need to sort out because I'm collecting quite a bit of stale fuel at the minute. It's never good to have too much stale fuel around for fire reasons. I literally just want to just agitate this whole carburetor just to get rid of any excess dirt. You'll see it all coming off onto a cloth. These are so cheaply made, it's not even funny. Oh, someone's texting me. I suspect it's Roy's the boy, I suspect he's missing me. I suspect it's Roy's the boy saying, have you entered my 100 subs giveaway to win a free sticker, carb cleaning kit and possibly a hat? And I think that's a good little good little giveaway that is. So if you're not subscribed to a, a gentleman called Roy's the boy, he does the same as me in his little shack. And he just reached over 100 subs, which is well chuffed with. And I'm, I'm chuffed with him too, because it's brilliant to see me smaller channels um, starting to climb and he's doing a giveaway so nip over to Roy's a boy I'll put a link in the top right hand corner of the screen now nip over to him subscribe to his channel and enter Roy's a boy's the 100 sub giveaway because carb cleaning kits the files are a good tool and I have entered but uh, I, shan't, I should roll it over if I win it because I've already got my set of carb cleaners this is what he's given away on his channel, a set of um, carb files. And that's exactly what I use. Exactly the same thing, so they are a good tool. So nip over and go and see him, he's great. Okay, so the next thing I'll do is get my air compressor and just blow this off generally. Uh, you don't need to see me do that, but I'll just blow it off generally so that uh, it's nice and clean. That one goes out the valve, the screw will go out the side. 
I'm gonna show you. You can try and get it uh, on there. It goes out there, and this one here that go out the main jet. But I'm sitting to come out down the bottom in the inside here. There should be nothing there. I've got some very fine holes just on the inside, on this side here, halfway down the tube. Can you see those? So they're the ones I'm conscious of. I need to make sure that it's blowing fuel out of it, a blowing cleaning fluid out of those holes. Because if it's not, then there's no point in carrying on. Because it needs to. Right, with that done, I'm now I can bring the air compressor up, blow into those holes down the side of it, inside the carburetor, you can't see, you can just about see. Knock those out. Back through. So every single hole will get a blast. That's that. Let's get a new bit of ragging. Because now that carburetor is now what I call a clean state. And it just gets snuggled up in a little blanket, covered up and put out of the way. Now we can bring in the bowl. I want to just do the same with this, literally. Some carb cleaner uh, WD-40, one or the other. Tip it out first. Start to swill it. Get my little wire brush in. Start to loosen it all up. Just be mindful of that little tiny O ring because I want to try and keep that if I can. Give it another swill. I'm going to take the straw off because it gives a finer mist. Use a bit of the cleaner side of a rag. Try and keep that over where it wants to be, really. Don't want to upset that too much. Because what, what, they're seated. What, once, they're, once they're in position, they seat. So I don't give it too much therapy, really. Well, that's cleanish. Let's bring the airline in. Just hose that off. And that's now in a clean state as well, so that goes over with a carburetor. We've got one jet here to do, one jet here to do. I'm going to get my WD 40 again. And yep. let's just start to work that through. Although it's come through the other side. This is why I said about going and going to see Roy. I'm going to get my car files. Oh, hold the line. The phone's ringing. It's probably Mrs. P. Yeah, that was Mrs. P. She's been shopping. Right, so these files, they fit just inside the hole. Now, the good thing with these is that you don't want to take any material off, but you just want to make sure that hole is at its maximum. So find a right size file. Give it a bit of that. And you're not filing. You're just cleaning. And that hole now... Is much bigger than what it was because it's clean and clear, and you can shoot the fuel through, and that'll do its job. That goes over in the clean department. And I've got one here to do. I won't need filing, but just need blowing off. Let me grab me air gun. And blow that one off. Good, good. <coughs> oh, I mean, that goes in a clean compartment. Got the float, which is dirty. There's no cracks or leaks on that. Just keep cleaning it. That's clean. Goes in the clean department. Got the needle. 
She's got a little tiny bracket tree on the top. So go careful of that. That looks in good condition to be fair. Just always wipe the bottom in the clean department. And that's it all apart from the big nut, which I don't I don't need to clean that so. But that dirty rag can now go for Burton. That's no good for nothing. So now I want to bring in another clean rag. Because now I want to try and keep this area as sterile as possible. I need to wipe my hands on another bit of clean rag. Just to stop introducing other particles coming in. Right, I'll do that and then I'll bring the carburetor back in. Okay, so we're now <coughs> back with a carburetor and uh, in a clean state. Hopefully I've got all the bits. So this carb is now clean. I'm not seeing anything else in it that's going to cause me any issues. <coughs> so first of all, that screw goes in there. And that goes all the way home. Screw it down nice and tight, or well seated. And then this one came out two full revolutions. There's one, two revolutions. That's good. <clears throat> Next one, get hold of a float and the little needle. And that just sits on there like so. It doesn't do any more than, than that. I tip it backwards. And that's going to be offered into his little home, which is down that little hole there. Bring in the pin, give it a quick little wipe off. It's been sat in all that dirt and grime. And then start to offer that into its little home there. And once it's all lined up, that pin will go all the way through. As long as it's symmetrical, it's fine. That's that one. We've got this other little jet here. Which has got a hole through it so I can see daylight, which is good. That goes in the top of this tube. And that also goes up tight as well. The screwdriver's a little bit too big, but it'll be alright, it'll go. That's in. Right, happy with that. Now we get the bowl <clears throat> and very carefully to seat that o ring back into its little home. This little recess there's got to sit in. Now, when you're cleaning these, you need to be very careful if you're using carburetor spray because that, if I use carburetor spray, uh, that would have expanded <coughs> that o ring and it wouldn't have fitted. So, just be mindful of using carburetor spray. That's why you don't see me using a lot of it. I tend to use WD-40 in air compressor. That doesn't want to go in there. What's occurring? To be fair, it's a lot of gunk on there. I'm going to give it a bit of a clean up with a wire brush. Where's my little wire brush go? Let's move a carburetor out of the way because cleanliness is godliness. A lot of gunk on them threads. Now some of these nuts, they also have a, a, a little jet within these, but this one hasn't got one. It's better to get a bit of a wash off. And a wipe off. That's better, it's nice and clean there. Alright, let's push that back in. Somewhere there. I really don't want to go on there. It feels like it's it's going in crooked. I just persevere. There it goes. It's just being a pain in the bottom. And then I very rarely use an impact gun to do that up. Just use a little spanner. 10 mil. 
do it up relatively tight, but not too tight where you strip the threads or anything nasty. Right, that carburetor is now done and hopefully well serviced. So we'll go back over to the lawnmower, try and fit this and uh, see how it runs. Okay, so what I'm doing now, I'll bring the airline back in and put it inside the tank. Just to blow that out, up through the fuel hose. That's pushing air out the top. Anything that shouldn't be in there. Let's get rid of all the crud. That's good. I'll clean my hands one more time. I don't want to introduce anything dirty onto a new carburetor or it'll be clean carburetor. Okay, here's a carb. And if we remember rightly, the uh, this one goes on first, followed by the spring. That one sits on there. That one sits on the two bolts. Very gently. That's that. Fuel hose can now go on whilst you've got access. And then followed by a little tiny clamp. Sorry about my hands being in the way, but I need to be in the way to get it done. That goes on there. Let's move the pull cord out away at the top cover. I can now bring in <coughs> the um, carburetor cover. It's got an airline to go on here on the back. So it slides over, over that. Um, primer bowl. Well, it's a bit of a bit of a bodge system. You've got to sort of do it in a double action, I suppose. That should seat over that first. Would be nice. You can't. See, the problem is you can't go too mad because it won't give you everything you need in one go. So try and bring it all off and then put it all back on together. That's the best method, I think. There you go. Something like that. Right, that's on. Pipe to go on. Yeah. And then we want our two carburetor um, nuts. Bring the impact in. Not super tight, because this is all this is all cheap steel, cheap metal, so you'll strip these threads if you go too mad. That's that one. <coughs> Air box cover back on. Don't forget, I'm not servicing this. I'm just trying to get it running. In fact, the gentleman said he's already put all in a new spot plug in it, so I'll check that in a minute, see if he has done it. Okay. Uh, I want to put the um, top cover back on. So that's filthy dirty as well. Right, so now I've got the uh, cover now cleaned, so they can go on. Yep, dropped it. I know where it went. I don't want to go on there. That's on. I want down the back here. which I now just dropped inside there. There it goes. I got it. Let's put him on just there first, see him on. That's better. Right, that's got all of that. Fuel cap back on, it's got a little tiny plunger in there. Happy with that. So that's all done, but before I do anything else, he said he's done the spark plug and everything else. Let's have a quick little deco at it. 
yeah, brand new spark plug in there, that's cool. So he has got that. That's good. Let's just check the oil. <coughs> so I'm not looking to change any of this, but it's nice if people do their own little mini services if they can. And it says he's done it, so let's just check the oil on it. My God, what's he done there? When he said he filled it with oil, I'm not actually joking. In fact, I need to show you. <laughs> I'm not going to pause it. <laughs> you can. <laughs> I'm going to. I need to put that back in. I'm not going to pause it because I. This. This is what it's all about. Live stuff. This is also one of the contributive factors to why it wasn't running. Let me bring it down in here. I promise you, I did not do anything like this. I can't even believe it. It, it. it does happen. So here's it all dipstick. And as you can see, it'll have a minimum maximum line as they all do. I don't know about you, but I can see oil up the top. Okay. Now this minimum maximum line, the maximum line is there. At the end of my nail. That's the maximum line. Now. The oil, I'm touching it all now, okay, okay, so it's going to go in, all the way in, all the way in, all the way in, and it's got to be screwed down yet, to there, take them back out, and that is reading up to here. So <laughs> that's got to come out. So let me extract some of that oil out because, uh, damn, that'll be too much. I'll get my oil pump and just start extracting some of that out. Right, I've taken quite a bit of oil out of there to be fair. It was well overfilled. And now, I don't like these new dipsticks they use, these yellow ones. Well, I can't use a darker colour. I know these have got to be yellow up here. Or should be yellow as a warning, but um, why we can't use it, have a different colour stem? I don't know. So now we're absolutely, and if you can see that, absolutely bang on where we need to be. It's a little bit, a little bit proud, but uh, compared to where it was, <coughs> it's bang on. Right. So what have I done? Carburetor clean, tank blowout, fuel flush. So now I'm going to put some neat fuel in it, which I should have some left. I'm running a bit low. I have to go and see Jacko. He's got plenty of fuel. I see he's just sold a lawnmower mower today, so he's a bit flush. He can send me some fuel over. Now I've got a wasp in here. I don't mind wasps. Right. Let's put a bit of that in there. A bit of the old good stuff. Not don't go too mad to begin with. I want to check for leaks on a carburetor. There's enough air to start this lawnmower up. So I'm just going to nip around the other side of the lawnmower, have a quick little gander, make sure we've got no leaks coming down. A bit of a wipe off. No leaks there. I dare say there's no fuel in that carburetor yet either. So let me take it outside. I'm not going to start it up until I get you outside. Promise you that. Because if it don't start, it don't start. It'll be back in the bench anyway, so. But, uh, I'm not wanting to have a go here, as we'll get it running first and make stuff look good. If it don't work, it don't work. So I'll put you on a, on, I'll turn off for a minute and then I'll come back and then we'll try and fire it up. Right, it's a bit blowy out, so I'll have to put the mic on. That's all on. Let's give us a fire up, see what happens. Let's tighten this handle up. That's it. Right, hopefully this will run. Let's give it a go. I'll give it some primes first. Bring some fuel down. That's priming. You can hear that.
fantastic. Okay, so that's pretty good. A, uh, another good little quick little fix. Have a quick slurp of my old mixed mowers. Let's get down on dirty coffee. You can't beat that. So that's good then. I'm quite happy with that. What I'm going to do about the little engine, I'm just going to run it up for about five minutes or so. Um, and then check the oil level afterwards, make sure it's correct and add or take away if required. Um, and also by giving it a little run as well, um, it's it guaranteed that it's actually working properly, but it, it fired up fine. The pull cord's a bit short. Um, I'm guessing that it's uh, snapped over time and he's just tired of not it or whatever, but uh, he hasn't asked to, to have it done, so I shan't bother doing it. So that's a quick little video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find it informative. And also, it just goes to prove, you know, if you don't look after these engines, and they're not going to run. And even more so, it's getting harder and harder to to do what I do, servicing and bits and pieces and tinkering, because you can buy an engine now in some of these local outlets for oh, cheap as chips. They really are so, so, so cheap. But the quality is just not there. Um, I was down in a shop just the other week um, and I think you can buy a Briggs & Strat engine, although it's not a proper Briggs & Strat, I don't think. Um, new series engine, the 500 or 450 E's, uh, with drive, all singing, all dance, does everything you want it to do for, I think it was £120. Now, that's really, really cheap, and well, it's super value. But the build quality is just not there. The decks are pretty much made of tin and they're so much thinner than the older style decks. The wheels are, are, are really, really cheap plastic and they're just, I see people queuing up and they've got these big boxes and you know, please just punch with a lawnmower. I just think, oh, I'll see you in three months. Absolutely shocking. Um, and I, I don't like working on them, but especially like things like that, you know, it's just, why would you do it to yourself? Um, but hey ho, that's that's a well be living. It's crazy. So anyway, thank you very much for joining me on this little episode of Mixed Mowers. I've been rambling now for about two minutes, and uh, I need to uh, get this video done. So thank you very much for watching me, and I hope to catch you all again on my next one. And don't forget, trouble is coming. I promise you, trouble is coming. There's going to be a battle. It's going to be epic. Thank you very much, and I'll catch you all soon. And don't forget, take it easy. Do you feel the pain?